Did you know that a recent study found that a staggering 80% of women are unhappy with their bodies? In our social media driven world, we're constantly bombarded with images of the perfect Instagram model body. But guess what? Throughout history, the ideal body has changed drastically. After extensive research, I've discovered that the ideal female body has varied widely over time. From stick fin to curvy hourglass, small breasts to big bellies. So for those of you struggling with body image, this video is a reminder that you can embrace and love your body, even if it doesn't fit today's trend. Why should we treat women's bodies as a trend anyway? While there are universal, timeless beauty ideals like facial symmetry and the golden ratio, this is not what we will talk about in this video. Today's focus is on the ever-changing ideal body throughout history. It's far from constant and highly dependent on culture and time, and so beauty is often credited to the eye of the beholder but we've been conditioned to see it through the eyes of what society dictates to us. This video will be pretty long since I want it to be as complete as possible, but I have divided this video into chapters, so if you want to go straight ahead to the more modern times like the 20th century and the 21st century, then you are free to do that. I will also talk about what women did to achieve the ideal body of their time. As today we all know plastic surgery, but before this became a thing, women already went to extreme measures to achieve the desired beauty ideal of their time. So let's dive in and explore the fascinating evolution of the ideal body. So for those of you who are new here, I am Dr. Kim de Tollenare and I make videos about everything related to beauty and medicine. So if this sounds interesting to you, then please subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. Prehistoric era. Imagine journeying back 25,000 years to the prehistoric era, where the Venus of Willem one of the first examples of prehistoric art was the epitome of beauty. She had a voluptuous, well-nourished figure, complete with large breasts, a prominent belly, and exaggerated curves, symbolizing fertility and abundance. In those days, a big, healthy body was essential for survival. What's interesting is that the Venus of Willendorf doesn't match the ideal hip-waist ratio we know today. And this reminds us that beauty standards aren't set in stone. They change and they evolve over time. So the the idea of a fixed ideal hip-waist ratio is debunked, revealing that it has varied throughout history and challenging the assumptions of evolutionary psychology. Ancient Greece Travel to ancient Greece, a time when physical perfection was highly valued. For once in history, men were held to a higher standard of beauty than women, striving for chiseled muscles and defined abs. Yet, the ideal female body type wasn't consistent, it varied across time and region. In the archaic periods, beauty meant a youthful, slender figure, small breasts and hips and long flowing hair. But as we move to the Hellenistic period, preferences shifted towards voluptuous figures with larger breasts, hips and thighs. These fuller, curvier forms were linked to sensuality and fertility, making them incredibly sought after. Middle Ages Step into the Middle Ages where the ideal female body looked strikingly different from today's hourglass figure. Imagine a pear-shaped silhouette, complete with a belly, long abdomen, ample buttocks and small breasts. Beauty standards have certainly evolved. Medieval art often depicted Eve, the first woman, embodying this ideal as religious beliefs were prominent during that era. Literary descriptions from the time also reveal a preference for dainty, small breasts. For example, Matthew of Vendome admired Helen of Troy's modest chest, while Geoffrey of Vinsov compared ideal breasts to gems, being only a brief handful. This fascination with small breasts was more attainable for the wealthy who could forego breastfeeding and rely on nurses. They would bind their breasts to maintain a pleasing size. Furthermore, a large belly was fashionable, symbolizing fertility. French and Burgundian women even wore stuffed sacks beneath their clothes to mimic pregnancy. Next, we'll explore the Italian Renaissance, where artists like Raphael envisioned their ideal beautiful woman as having a fuller figure, fleshy arms and legs, broad hips and a round stomach. Physicians even suggested foods to encourage weight gain. Yet, despite the admiration for curvier figures, small breasts remained a preference. Larger breasts were seen as a sign of sexual experience, while smaller ones symbolized modesty and virginity. Unmarried women with larger breasts resorted to extreme measures to reduce their size to avoid being
being perceived as immodest or indecent. They wore tight corsets or bindings, took herbal remedies or applied ointments to shrink their breasts. Baroque period, 17th century. Immerse yourself in the Baroque period where art and literature shape beauty ideals much like social media does today. The Rubenesque figure was admired with women flaunting well-proportioned bodies, rounded abdomens, wide hips and ample breasts. To achieve this ideal, women padded their undergarments and indulged in food. In the Baroque era, the more you ate, the more beautiful you were. Victorian era. Enter the Victorian era where the hourglass figure took center stage. The beauty ideal focused on a tiny waist, bigger breasts and a delicate appearance. Women used breast padding, corsets and bustle pads to achieve this look. But extreme corsetry could often lead to restricted breathing, poor digestion and even organ shifting. Fine gentleman, don't you think? He fancies you, you know. <gasps> I can't breathe. Yes, I, I'm a bit nervous myself. I'm more lighter. Wait a minute, I'll hold on to the post. Now, pull! <clears throat> <clears throat> As the era progressed, being overweight became shameful, leading women to resort to risky weight loss methods like cocaine, tapeworms and even arsenic. Notably, poet Lord Byron popularized the Grecian bands, requiring women to wear tight corsets and tilt their pelvis forward for a more prominent posterior. 20th century. As we leave the Victorian era behind, we're about to embark on a fascinating exploration of the 20th century, where the ideal body and fashion world underwent drastic changes, decade by decade. But what influenced these changes? Was it the rise of Hollywood and mass media or was it the impact of major social and political changes such as feminism and the two world wars? Gibson Girl Starting the century with the iconic Gibson Girl who served as a transitional figure between the Victorian era and the modern age. While the Gibson Girl shared some similarities with her Victorian predecessors such as the slender waist an hourglass silhouette, the focus shifted to a more natural look that emphasized the S-shaped curve, achieved through less restrictive corsetry. As women gained increasing independence and began participating in sports, higher education and the workforce, the Gibson girl became taller, athletic and graceful, reflecting this newfound sense of freedom and movement. The clothing of the time also evolved to reflect this change, with tailored suits, shirtwaist dresses, blouses and ankle-length skirts that exuded a more natural and relaxed look. Get ready to swing into the roaring 20s on some jazz music, of course. This was an era of significant social and political change. Women gained the right to vote in 1920, which gave them newfound political power and agency. The end of World War I was also a turning point in history where women took on traditionally male-dominated jobs and responsibilities, while men were away at war, leading to newfound independence and empowerment. One of the most significant changes during the 20s was the liberation from restrictive corsets. Women embraced a more waif-like and slim look, characterized by the flapper style. Featuring a flat chest and streamlined silhouettes. To achieve this look, women would often bind their breasts and wear straight, knee-length dresses. Short haircuts became popular, with the famous bob hairstyle being a hallmark of the era. One of the icons of the time was Louise Brooks, known for her signature bob and sultry gaze. Golden Age of Hollywood, 1930s 1950s, the pinup girl. Welcome to the Golden Age of Hollywood. This era was all about glamour glamour and sexuality in American culture and it's not hard to see why. With the rise of fashion and film, it was a time of larger-than-life characters and dazzling looks. But beneath the glitz and glamour, traditional gender roles and femininity were still heavily enforced. The ideal body type of the time was the hourglass figure with Marilyn Monroe, Elizabeth Taylor and Ava Gardner among the starlets who embodied the standard of beauty. Big movies during this time were Gone with the Wind, Singing in the Rain and Gender 
gentlemen prefer blondes. The hourglass figure was mainly achieved through shapewear, breast stuffing and dieting. Unlike today's beauty standards, fitness and exercise were not promoted as much as they are today and women were encouraged to maintain a softer, more curvaceous figure. Plastic surgery such as breast augmentation as we know it today was not yet widely available or as advanced in 1950s. The procedure was in its early stages and still considered experimental. However, there have been rumors and speculations that Marilyn Monroe had undergone liquid silicone injections in her breasts. This claim has never been proven, but some sources claim that those injections were infected right before her death. The use of liquid silicone injections was also not approved by the FDA and was considered unsafe. Many women who received them experienced serious complications and health problems. There have been rumors that other big Hollywood actresses at the time underwent similar types of breast augmentations. Advances in printing technology meant that images of these stars could be mass reproduced, leading to the rise of pinup art and icons. Pinup girls were used to sell everything from cigarettes to clothing and they became a symbol of American culture from the 1930s to 1950s. But it's also interesting to note that the first issue of Playboy was one with Marilyn Monroe on the cover, released at the end of 1953. Hence, the stereotypical image of the Playboy girl we still know today is a blonde woman with a curvy figure. It was also during this time that the famous quote by Hedy Lamarr emerged. Men don't marry women who are smart. They marry women who are pretty. Say, they told me you were stupid. You don't sound stupid to me. I can be smart when it's important, but most men don't like it. Except Gus. He's always been interested in my brains. No. No, that much of a fool he's not. In short, the golden age of Hollywood was a time of both fantasy and strict adherence to traditional gender roles. It was a time of larger-than-life characters and glamorous looks, and it left an indelible mark on American culture. The Swinging 60s The 1960s was a time of immense change, where traditional gender roles were being challenged and redefined. With the advent of birth control, the sexual revolution and increased access to education and job opportunities, women Women were able to break free from the confines of societal expectations. This new wave of liberation extended to the ideal body type, with a shift away from the hourglass figure to a more slim and streamlined frame. The wayfish British model Twiggy became the ultimate icon of the era with her boyish frame and short haircut, gracing magazine covers and inspiring countless young women to embrace their own unique beauty. Audrey Hepburn was another iconic figure of the time with her slim, elegant and frame and minimalist style. However, there was still room for the more curvy hourglass figure during this time where we see actresses such as Brigitte Bardot and Sophia Loren. If you wanted to be trending, you could either choose between the new ideal slim and streamlined silhouette or the curvy hourglass. The fashion of the 60s reflected the new ideal body type in a number of ways, with the introduction of the miniskirt playing a significant role in the shift towards more streamlined and slim physique. British designer Mary Kwan was credited with popularizing the miniskirt, inspired by the street fashion in London. The shorter hemlines put the focus on the legs and encouraged women to showcase a more toned and athletic physique. The miniskirt was initially met with controversy, but soon gained popularity among young women who saw it as a symbol of freedom and rebellion against traditional gender roles. Other popular fashion trends of the era included shift dresses, mud style outfits, bold geometric prints, bright colors and knee-high boots. The fashion of the 60s reflected the broader cultural changes of the era with the rise of youth culture, the sexual revolution and the influence of rock and roll music. The hippie movement celebrated a more bohemian, free-spirited look, rejecting traditional fashion norms. Overall, the fashion of the 1960s was about breaking with tradition, embracing a new youthful spirit and expressing oneself through bold and daring fashion choices. The 70s, fitness and aerobics craze. The 1970s saw the rise of the fitness and aerobics craze and Farah Fawcett was one of the most iconic figures of this time. Her poster featuring her in 
a red swimsuit and her signature feathered hair became a sensation and sold millions of copies worldwide. The ideal body type of the 70s was still slim and toned, but with a focus on a more athletic look. The fitness and aerobic trends of the 70s was also influenced by the feminist movement, which encouraged women to take control of their bodies and prioritize their physical health, to pursue an active lifestyle and to have strong, toned muscles. This was reflected in fashion trends such as the popularity of athletic wear, including tracksuits and sneakers. 80s and 90s The supermodel era The 80s and 90s were all about excess and glamour compared to the more sporty and natural look of the 70s. Supermodels like Cindy Crawford, Naomi Campbell and Claudia Schiffer became household names and set the standard for the ideal body type of the era. Supermodels were the new superstars that were on the covers of all magazines. The fitness and aerobics craze of the 70s carried over into the 80s and many people embraced the trend of working out and eating healthily. Supermodels were the new it girls and were tall, slender and toned, with long legs, flat stomachs, fine muscles with a slim waist and larger breasts. The rise of the TV show Baywatch in the 1990s also contributed to the popularity of the toned and athletic body type. Actress Pamela Anderson, who played the iconic lifeguard CJ Parker, became a sex symbol and her voluptuous figure was seen as the epitome of sex appeal at the time. During this era, there was an increased demand for breast augmentation surgeries, however, a smaller bottom was seen as desirable. In the supermodel era, era, fashion was all about excess and opulence. Designers such as Gianna Versace, Chanel and Christian Dior created over-the-top pieces with bold prints, bright colors and intricate embellishments. It was a time of luxury with high-end fashion becoming more accessible to the masses. 90s and up to 2000s. The heroin chic look. The 80s were over and the 90s to me represented something different, something more natural, something less flashy. In the 1990s, a new trend emerged in the fashion industry, the heroin chic look. This look was characterized by an extremely thin and wave-like body type, with a focus on protruding bones and a hollow chic appearance. The ideal body type of the time was no longer the curvaceous supermodel figure, but rather a very wave-like figure. Model Kate Moss became the new icon of beauty, and the fashion industry embraced this new trend with open arms. The heroin chic look was controversial and criticized for promoting an unhealthy body image. It never occurred to me that anyone would scream about anorexia. I mean, I never, ga I never thought about it. She is thin, but she's natural. This is who she is, and yes, she's thin, and models should be thin. Their clothes just look better on, on people who are thin, and certainly photograph better. But there's nothing artificial about her. There's nothing, there's nothing fake. With many people concerned about the impact it would have on young women's self-esteem and body image, Kate Moss received a lot of backlash for her controversial quote, nothing tastes as good as skinny feels, in an interview. But despite the backlash, the trend persisted and influenced fashion and beauty standards for years to come. The rise of the heroin chic trend was influenced by a number of factors, including a shift in cultural attitudes towards beauty and an obsession with achieving a certain level of coolness and edginess. In the music world, grunge and alternative rock were at their peak and the initiated look of many of the jar stars was seen as the epitome of cool. In the fashion industry, designers sought to distance themselves from the glamorous and extravagant aesthetic of the supermodel era, instead embracing a more raw and gritty aesthetic. The clothes were often dark and minimalist with a focus on texture and shape rather than color and embellishments. Now let's get to the 2000s with the Victoria's Secret. Angel. The 2000s marked the era of the Victoria's Secret Angel. The ideal was still to be very thin, but it shifted slightly towards a body ideal that endorsed health and fitness. Very slim, complemented with washboard abs to show off in low-rise jeans and crop tops. Tutorials on how to fake abs with makeup were very popular during that time. of 
Britney Spears, Jessica Alba, Megan Fox, Cassie and the Victoria's Secret Angels became a cultural phenomenon. Adriana Lima, Alessandra Ambrosio and Miranda Kerr were considered the ultimate sex symbols and were idolized by millions of women and men worldwide. However, the 90s and the still very skinny beauty ideal of the 2000s resulted in a peak in eating disorders and many celebrities like Mary-Kate Olsen, Nicole Richie and Paris Hilton were known to be suffering from them. There was an intense obsession with being skinny and a preoccupation with dieting. Tabloids heavily criticized celebrities' weight and shamed them for gaining weight, always pairing it with unflattering pictures. Magazines and tabloids perpetuated the idea that a woman's worth is tied to her appearance and that her weight is a reflection of her health. They promoted ways to lose weight with paradoxically unhealthy diets, detoxes and cleanses. There was also a lot of fat phobia and obsession with skinniness in traditional media and movies, which we can see in, for example, The Bridget Jones Diary and The Devil Wears Prada. You look so thin. Do I? Yeah. Oh, it's for Paris. Well, I'm on this new diet. It's very effective. Well, I don't eat anything. And when I feel like I'm about to faint, I eat a cube of cheese. Well, it's definitely working. I know. I'm just one stomach flew away from my god weight. I saw it. And do you know what really just kills me? about this whole thing is the clothes that you're going to get. I mean, mm, you don't deserve them. You eat carbs, for Christ's sake. God. I said to myself, go ahead. Take a chance. Hire the smart fat girl. The rise of pro Anna websites and trends like the tie gap were also prevalent. What's interesting to note is that a big bum was still seen as a bad thing and this was also frequently seen in lots of popular media. That's where you're going, fat ass. <laughs> However, in the mid to late 2000s, there came a rise in curvy hourglass figures with a bigger bum, epitomized by Beyonce, Jennifer Lopez, big, big booty, you... and of course, how could I forget, Kim Kardashian and the rise of the most popular reality TV show, Keeping Up With The Kardashians, which changed our beauty ideals completely from that moment on. Tina Fey, in her book Bossy Pants, talked about this switch in body type. But I think the first real change in women's body image came when Gilo turned it butt style. That was the first time that having a large scale situation in the back was part of mainstream American beauty. Girls wanted butts now. And then, what felt like moments later, boom, Beyonce brought the leg meat. A back porch and thick muscular legs were now widely admired. And from that day forward, women embraced their diversity and realized that all shapes and sizes are beautiful. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm totally messing with you. All Beyonce and Gilo have done is add to the laundry list of attributes women must have to qualify as beautiful. This led to the rise of a mix of ideal body parts and with the rise of social media in the 2000s, the Instagram model or influencer ideal body was born. 2010s up to now, the influencer or Instagram model era. Beauty ideals are now fed by social media influencers and reality stars like the Kardashian family. The slim thick beauty standards began around 2010s and this requires a large chest, tiny waist, flat stomach, wide hips, round bottom, thigh gap and no cellulite or stretch marks. This body type is very unrealistic to obtain for most people and even the celebrities, I'm thinking of the Kardashian family, that helped to popularize this look don't truly resemble these images that they put out to the world. There have been various instances where the Kardashian family has been accused of editing or photoshopping their pictures for social media. In April 2021, Khloe Kardashian faced backlash after an unedited photo of her in a bikini was leaked online. Khloe and her team reportedly worked to get the photo taken down from social media sites, stating that it was unauthorized and should not have been released. In 2018, Kim Kardashian was called out for posting a heavily edited photo of herself on Instagram, which showed her with a tiny waist and large hips. Fans pointed out that that the photo appeared to be distorted and manipulated, leading to accusations of photoshopping. Next to that, these celebrities have gotten many, many surgeries to achieve their looks. No matter your opinion of her, Kylie Jenner has set new beauty standards for women. Her big lips and perfectly curved body are what we can just wish for. But none of these things is natural, at least for Kylie. She has undergone numerous cosmetic surgeries to get this body of hers. 
but how much does it cost to look like her? Kylie admitted getting natural lip injections and spends between $5,700 and $23,400 a year on her lips alone. And although she denies it, many experts think Kylie has also had a Brazilian butt lift, which could have cost from $10,000 to $25,000. Lastly, there are breast implants. Many doctors say she has had the procedure done, and the implantations can cost between $10,000 and $20,000. And they popularized the BBL, which leads to the BBL trends, which stands for Brazilian Butt Lifts. So BBL stands for Brazilian Butt Lift, and essentially it is taking fat from a different part of your body and injecting it into the butt. And upwards up until a few years ago, we thought that this was the safest way to enhance the buttocks. And as we know, our society and our culture, it's really focused on the derriere. Unfortunately, studies have now shown that it has the highest mortality rate, death rate, in all of plastic surgery. There was a study that showed that literally one in 3,000 women who undergo this surgery die from it. And these are and healthy pre-screened women. So these, these are aren't healthy, like These are young folks. women, yeah. and often they're young women of color uh, who want to undergo this operation. So I don't think that it's not a safe operation. I think there are unsafe ways to perform it. And in general, there are plastic surgeons around the country who do that's almost all they do is Brazilian butt lifts. And they do it very safely because they know where you can inject the fat, which is in the subcutaneous layer, which is above the muscle, and where you don't inject the fat, which is below the muscle. But where I caution patients is to be very careful if the person who's doing it on you is not a true expert in it. You don't want somebody dabbling in your butt. You want only a true expert to do it because when somebody's dabbling and they don't know those planes very well, that's when people die. And I describe it as kind of like the Death Star, where like you get these two missiles that go right to the, the right part of the Death Star, and the Death Star whole thing blows up. That's what, a, that's what a fat embolism can be, is you get fat that is injected into a blood vessel, and it goes right to your heart and your lungs, and you die like that. According to the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, the BBL was the fastest growing surgical procedure in 2018, up with 61% in 5 years. These women were gorgeous to begin with, but they can't even live up to the current beauty standards of today without the use of surgery and editing apps. The obsession with the perfect body has led to many cases of body dysmorphia in young women, fueled by the use of editing apps and the pressure to conform to these standards. I think by now we're all aware that video editing software exists, but I think something that we don't quite appreciate is the extent of it. I can stand here right now in front of you with my real body, but I can also use an app to make my waist smaller. I can make my hips a little bit wider. I can make my boobs bigger. I can make my waist even a tiny bit smaller than it was. I could grow and get a little taller. I could make my legs slimmer. I can even change my neck and shoulders. And then I can move around. I can exist on your screen, portraying a body that I don't own. I can even change my face. I can change the structure of it, the color of my eyes. I can be anything I want to be using apps and I don't have to tell you. So please let this be a reminder next time you feel insecure because you've seen something on Instagram that it is very easy to manipulate the image here. However, in recent years, there has been a growing body positivity movement that challenges traditional beauty standards and promotes self-love and acceptance of all body types. This has led to a push for more inclusivity and diversity in advertising and media. Well, suck it in. I'm not sucking shit in. Why? Real stomachs is coming to fuck back, okay? You saw that people. With a demand for unedited photos and a celebration of real bodies. However, the Instagram model beauty ideal is so pervasive up to now. But there have been rumors that the slim thick beauty standards may be on its way out of fashion. This speculation is fueled by the recent weight loss of celebrities like Kim and Khloe Kardashian, who have reportedly reversed their Brazilian butt lift procedures, as well as the rise of models like Lil. Moss and Kaya Gerber, who have been sporting a slimmer physique on the runway, which has caught the attention of fashion insiders. There has also been a push towards more natural, unaltered bodies in the media and on social media, which could potentially lead to a shift towards a more slim body ideal. However, whether skinny will become the next trending body type or not, this is not the message I want to convey through this video. The ideal body standard is subject to change and depends on current technologies such as traditional media 
media, social media and the internet, the fashion industry, and social and political changes. Having watched this video, you might have noticed that you could find your body type in at least one period in history. This is a testament to the fact that every body type is beautiful and you should not feel sad if your body type is not currently in trend. You also probably have noticed that there is a trend in history of slim bodies being in fashion, then curvy hourglass again, and then slim being in fashion again. It's not wrong to desire to enhance your body with diet and exercise or plastic surgery. People should do whatever makes them feel better. However, it's important to remember that you were born with a specific body type. If you were born with a body type similar to Kate Moss, then undergoing excessive plastic surgeries to look slim thick might not be a healthy and realistic goal. Similarly, if you have a curvy body type, following very unhealthy diets to be ultra thin might not be practical for your body and could end up with eating disorders. In conclusion, you should love the body type that you were born with. And if you want to enhance it, it's okay, as long as you don't take it to extreme measures. Don't try to become something that is not you to fit a trend, as trends are fleeting. Despite society's influence, many people have different preferences and you will find those who appreciate and find your body beautiful just the way it is. If you like this video, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you soon for the next video. Bye!